Hello, everyone. My name is Anna Ardizzoni, and I am a clinical research coordinator at the Center for Celiac Research and Treatment here at Mass General Hospital for Children in Boston, Mass. One of our clinical trials that our center is participating in is a 14-day gluten challenge clinical trial. As a clinical research coordinator for this trial, I have been receiving a lot of great questions, both medical and administrative, from our interested participants. To answer these questions and more, I am pleased to be joined today by Dr. Alessio Fasano, Director of the Center and Principal Investigator, as well as Dr. Catherine Olshin, Clinical Research Fellow at Mass General Hospital for Children. We are here to answer some common questions that we have been receiving about the trial. We will also provide information that may help you decide whether you are eligible and able to participate in this research. Please note that we will only be answering general questions about this particular trial and will not be providing any medical advice. If you are interested in participating or have additional questions that are not answered in this video, please click in the link below in the description of this video to contact our team. And before we get started, Dr. Fasano or Dr. Olshin, is there anything you'd like to add about today's discussion? No, we're ready to answer whatever question you have for us. Great, great. Let's jump into some frequently asked questions. So our first question is for Dr. Olshin, what is the research goal of this trial? So this study is being done to find markers in the blood and changes in the intestine in response to gluten exposure in patients with celiac disease who have been eating a gluten-free diet for an extended period of time. Our second question is, what is required of trial participants and to please describe the endoscopy? So for this study, there are six total visits, five here in person at the Mass General Hospital and one virtual visit. It entails a 14-day gluten challenge, blood draws, urine collection, and electrocardiogram only on the first screening visit, as well as two endoscopies, one before the gluten challenge begins and one at the end. An endoscopy is a procedure where we take a thin tube that has a camera on the end of it to look at your upper GI system, which is comprised of your esophagus, your stomach, and the first part of your small intestine called the duodenum. The physician performing this procedure will take small samples called biopsies that are about the size of the tip of a pen. This procedure is pain-free and you'll receive medications during it to help you feel comfortable throughout the procedure. It's a very safe and routine procedure that we perform often and only takes about five to 10 minutes total. Dr. Fasano, to please explain what a gluten challenge is and what are potentially the details for this 14-day gluten challenge in particular? So the um, entry criteria so is that the people to participate in this trial has to be people that have been diagnosed with CD disease by blood tests, confirmed by an endoscopy, and then on a gluten-free diet for a, 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 a long period of time, at least six months, and therefore, are normally on a gluten-free diet and doing clinically well. If you fulfill this criteria, in order to do the study, it is necessary that a small amount of gluten, 10 grams, roughly a tablespoon of gluten powder um, that will be mixed into food will be taken uh, every day. This uh, food can be apple sauce or hot chocolate. And we do this for two consecutive weeks uh, during which we record uh, you know, your symptoms and, uh, and everything else that eventually you will be sharing with us uh, during the trial. And Dr. Pisano, why is a gluten challenge necessary? Well, the, the overall goal of this trial is to understand how the immune system reacts with the exposure of gluten to find possible new targets for diagnosis or treatment uh, for celiac disease alternative or complementary to the gluten-free diet. While we know a great deal of what the immune system does uh, when uh, exposed to gluten subject with celiac disease, there are still some, you know, hot spots that are black box for us that we really need to understand. So identify changes in the blood in terms of how the immune system and the bloods react. 
or in the intestine by taking these um, biopsies that will give us uh, also the opportunity to study the immune system into the um, you know intestinal mucosa as well as other parameters will definitely give us the opportunity to find these red flags, what we call biomarkers, um, that um, will be fundamental to identify steps that are not known to us uh, that leads to uh, the uh, damage in the intestine typical celiac disease. Those steps will be new targets for treatment that we don't have right now. Um, so uh, th this is the reason why we have uh, really to do the, 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 the gluten challenge. Um, um, you know, uh, unlike the occasional gluten cross contamination, this gluten consumption will be monitored by our clinical team. So anything that will happen to you will be known on, on real time and any symptoms or inflammatory experience will uh, had when the challenge hands will eventually, um, you know, go away, um, as typically happen when you're exposed to gluten. So there is no permanent damage that this challenge will create. Great, thank you. Our next most fre frequently asked question is, how long are each study visits in particular? So normally every study visit is about an hour, if not less, except for the endoscopy days. You can expect the endoscopy days and procedures to take approximately three hours in total. Our next question is for Dr. Olshin. Are there any, is there any flexibility in the visit days and times that these visits can occur? So while the date of the first screening visit is flexible, the dates become less flexible once you actually start the gluten challenge. Mm -hmm. This is because certain milestones need to be met on specific days within the timeline of the trial. So these strict timelines are things like the first endoscopy, the 14 day gluten challenge, and then the follow-up endoscopy. Times for these visits um, are typically Monday through Friday during business hours, um, and the endoscopies typically take place in the morning. Thank you. So our, our next question is, will I be compensated? And the answer is yes, you will be paid a total of $1,110 after you have completed the six study visits. Our next question is for Dr. Pisano. What are my risks if I participate in this gluten challenge? There are a series of risks that they are defined as minimal risks that our Institute Review Board um, approved. They are related uh, to the gluten challenge. We discussed this before, but just to reiterate, when you're exposed yourself to gluten, as you probably know already for your own personal experience with cross-contamination, this may translate in no symptoms at all. And the vast majority of people with celiac disease would not react to exposure to gluten. And that's, you know, again, one of the challenges to be, you know, strictly gluten-free for a long time. Or you can react with symptoms and signs that um, may not be necessarily the same that brought you to the diagnosis, but they can eventually be related to gluten exposure. And the symptoms uh, are vary from individual to another, both in terms of kind of symptoms and the severity of symptoms. So you can have abdominal discomfort, uh, bloating, uh, you know, changing your uh, bowel habits. You can have diarrhea, constipation, um, uh, fatigue, and you know, all the symptoms have been related to C disease. But as we mentioned before, um, you know, this will be monitored. Uh, the risk of an endoscopy uh, that is a routine procedure, um, as you heard from the Holshin, um, will imply that, you know, there are the risk with the sedation that you have to have uh, to do the endoscopy and the risk of the procedure per se, they are very limited, but, you know, in extreme cases, particularly when intestine is extremely inflamed, uh, there is a possibility that you can have tears in your wall of the intestine all the way to perforation. Um, and this will be explained before the uh, endoscopy because you have to sign uh, a consent form. Uh, minimal risks are associated with the drop uh, of blood drawing. Uh, so the, if you, when you draw blood, of course, you can have, you know, bruising, uh, you can have some bleeding. Um, and so this is, uh, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, you know, complications that again are associated just uh, to the use of the needle to obtain the blood and uh, 
And of course, because you have to do a, a EKG and electrocardiogram, the placement of the um, detection, you know, uh, devices there can uh, create some uh, skin uh, rash. Great, thank you. And one of our last questions is very much so related to what we've been discussing, and this is for Dr. Olshin. Will physicians be able to monitor symptoms and the safety of the participants? Absolutely. Um, at every visit, um, you'll have the chance to discuss with a physician um, what symptoms you've been having, and they'll go over safety concerns, if there are any. Um, if you have any urgent um, questions or concerns with reactions outside of the study visits themselves, you will have a contact sheet that has our um, staff's telephone numbers on there for quick contact. And if in case of any concern for a medical emergency, we ask that you call 911. Thank you. And Dr. Fasano, our, our last question today is, how safe is it to come to MGH due to the COVID-19 pandemic? Probably one of the safest places is the hospital nowadays, and MGH is at the forefront of the way that, you know, properly uh, approached, you know, um, measures to minimize the risk to contract COVID-19 has been, you know, um, implemented. Um, indeed, when uh, you walk at the main entrance to the MGH, you can enter only one entrance at this point. You will go to the welcome desk that will guide you um, how to eventually gain access to the hospital, um, including the fact that no matter what you wear, you have to wear a new mask that will be given to you, that you have to clean your hands with the proper, you know, um, uh, uh, sanitizers that are, you know, uh, present throughout the hospital, and, and uh, you will be instructed how to remain, you know, with the physical distance uh, to minimize the risk to interact with other people uh, in the hospital, no matter if they are infected or not. Um, there are several hand sanitizing stations throughout the hospital, um, and when you come for your one of your five visits, uh, since are uh, either COVID screen or for symptoms or, you know, um, in preparation of the endoscopy, you will go through a, a molecular testing for COVID-19 infection. Um, there are, you know, more information on safety um, in terms of uh, uh, what are the policies at MGH that you can uh, um, find in the web link that uh, will be sent, you know, described below. And, uh, um, you know, this is uh, um, pretty much what, uh, has been implemented with a great success since the beginning of the pandemic at MGH. Great, thank you both. And if there are any more questions that arise, please feel free to email our center at celiacresearch at mgh.harvard.edu and please address your message to myself, Anna. Thank you to both Dr. Fasano and Dr. Olshin for helping us to understand this gluten challenge clinical trial. And we thank you for viewing our discussion.